Hi everyone and welcome. In this review note, we are going to look at file system permission inheritance and explicit permissions. If you've not viewed the video yet on basic file system permissions, you should go and do that first since this extends on top of that. We're gonna look at data two instead of data one this time around. And what I'm interested in is what happens if we don't like the permissions that we see inherited from the volume root. So going back and looking at security, I've got users are able to read and execute, and through special, they can also create uh, files and folders in this particular folder. What if I don't want them to do that? Well, one of the things I could do, since this is all allow, is I could create a deny permission that will counteract this because deny overrides allow. So let's do that. I'm going to add a new permission. So we'll do change permissions. I'm gonna to have to put in some credentials since I am not the administrator account. And what I'm going to be able to do is add. So I'm gonna say I wanna add. I'm going to use users, or in this case, I'm gonna just use domain users because it's gonna be a little bit quicker. I could also change, let me go back in here for a second. This is looking at the domain. I could change the location and look explicitly at local on my server and use users if I want, but I'm gonna use domain users instead. And I'm going to get rid of these guys and go back into special permissions and choose create files, write data, and create folders append data. Those are the permissions that get created with that special access control entry. And I'm going to change this from allow to deny. And I'm also going to change this to this folder and subfolder. So exactly the same as what that access control entry is, except deny instead of allow. And we'll say OK on that. And here is my new access control entry. We can see it applies to domain users of which John and Jane are a member. It's special. It's this folder and subfolders. And notice in this case, it's not inherited. This is explicitly set on this file system resource. So if I apply that, then that means that if I look at my effective access and I wanna know what John can do, then this is going to tell me that John can still read and execute, but John no longer has the ability to create anything. So that's really all we need to do for that and we're good to go. Now I'm gonna create a couple of subfolders in here and again, I'm gonna to have to put in my credentials and it's coming back and saying that I don't have permission to do this. And the reason for that might seem a little odd but if we back up and look at the permissions that we just set on this folder, we said that we're going to deny that write capability, but here's the problem. Administrators are also domain users. And that means that I just took away my permission as an administrator also to create a subfolder. Not quite what we had in mind. So as a result of that, we're gonna to have to not follow this path. So I'm gonna take this access control entry and I'm going to get rid of it by deleting it. Um, one of the things, by the way, that we wanna be very careful of, anytime you're setting up file system permissions, don't use deny, okay? There's a better way to do that. There's always a better way to do that. So you can change the permission. Again, I have to put in my credentials for that. And I'm going to pick this guy and say I wanna remove it and say apply and that permission is now gone, which means we'll be able to get in, in and create the folders that we wanted to. Unfortunately, of course, that also means everybody else can because they are a member of this users group. Okay, so what else can we do to get out of this problem where we don't want the users to be able to create, but you know we don't want to have to deny anything? What if I just got rid of this? I can select that, I can try to delete it, but oh man, now I've got a problem here because this particular access control entry is inherited. I can't just get rid of it because of the fact that it's inherited. But 
One of the things we can do is disable inheritance so that we can modify this access control list as we will. Now, one of the things we always say is don't disable inheritance unless you absolutely have to. And when you set up that base folder, data two in this case, to start building subfolders on, underneath that, this is one of the only places you ever want to disable inheritance. So we're going to start off with least privilege, get rid of these privileges we don't want at the base, and then start building up from there. I'm going to select Disable Inheritance. I've got two choices. I can either convert the inherited permissions to explicit so I can keep them all and get rid of what I don't want, or I can remove everything and start from ground up. I'm going to start with what we have because that'll work out well for me. And then now I can pick this guy and remove him. So now users do not have the ability to write. Apply that. And if I now go into effective access and check this out for John, we'll be able to see that John now has read and execute standard permission. All right. Now, this is all great. Um, what if we are now going to create some subfolders underneath this for specific groups? So I'm going to cancel out of this, get out of that. I'm going to open data two. I'm going to create a folder in here. And I'm going to call this one group one. And I'm going to create a second one called group two. Right, now let's take a look at group one. Here's my access control list. Notice that this is all inherited from the data2 folder because we broke the inheritance at data2 and therefore those permissions are all explicit and now all are inherited from there. Now what if we want everybody in group one to be able to read and write into this folder? Can't do that right now, right? The only people who can access this are members of users, who of course is everybody, but they only get read execute. So I'm gonna change this. And I'm going to add in a new permission. We're going to use the group one group. Here it is here. And I'm going to add write into that list. I'm going to allow, and it's going to be on this folder and everything underneath it. I'll say OK. Here is my new permission. It's explicit on this folder. I get read, write, and execute. And that applies to this folder, subfolders, and files. So it'll be inherited by everything underneath the group one folder as well. This means that John, as a member of group one, should have read, write, and execute. So if we go over and look at effective access, we're going to pick John. Oops, sorry about that. Let me go back and apply that. We'll go over and look at John. We'll view his effective access. And John now has more than read and execute. So he's got these writes back in here. He can also create uh, folders and data. That's all awesome. Jane, as a member of users, should have read. We'll check that out as well. And looking at her effective access, yes, she does. Awesome. Right now, we're going to want to do the same thing over in group two. So let me get out of here, get out of here. We'll change the permissions on group two. And I'm going to add in, in this case, group two. We're going to allow this folder, subfolders, and files, write, OK, and apply. If I check on Jane, she should be able to write. And she can. You can see these extra permissions. If we check on John, then he should be read and execute only. And sure enough, he is. And that's all there is to setting that up. Now, there's one other thing, though, that comes along with that. What if I don't want group one to be able to read group two's data and vice versa. Right now, the reason they can do that is because users here is still being inherited 
from data two. All right, fair enough. Now we can fix that though. What I'm gonna do is go back up onto data two and we'll go back into the access control list. Now, one of the things we wanna be careful of, we don't wanna to totally get rid of this guy because otherwise the users won't be able to get down to that folder. But notice that the scope or applies to is everything. And here's where changing the scope can be a really big deal for us. If I say I wanna change something, then under those circumstances, I can say I wanna pick this guy and I'm gonna make a change to that. So rather than this folder, subfolders, and files, what if I change this to this folder only as far as the scope is concerned? Now what's going to happen with this is by doing this folder only, that means that no subordinate objects are going to inherit this permission, meaning the group one and group two folders will not see this. So let's try that out. Going to pop down into group one, look at the permissions. And now that users is not here anymore. So since that inheritance or that scope was set to this folder only, it's no longer inherited by this guy, which is really cool because that means we don't have to disable the inheritance here to delete that particular access control entry. And that's really, really important because in the future, if we want to make a change into the directory structure, if I was to disable the inheritance here, and I went back up and said, you know, I need to make a change in here someplace. So I'll come into data two. I'll open this, go into the access control list. I'll add something in, make a change, whatever it is I need to do. But if I add this in, if I've broken that inheritance or disabled the inheritance and in all those subfolders, I make the change here and it doesn't show up anywhere else. Now it's fine if you got a couple directories, but what happens when you get tens of thousands of directories and millions of files down there and you have to go and start trying to change those all at the same time? You're not going to want to do that. If I make a change in here and select something, though, and I say, you'll notice this thing down here that says enable inheritance. If I do that and I force that and say, hey, blow down through the directory structure, you know what the problem is? It blows away all of my custom settings, which means I have to go back and redo all those again. So really important to build this from the beginning so it's going to be maintainable and sustainable over the long term. Last thing I want to do is let's check this out. I'm going to switch over on to the workstation and log on as John. All right, I'm over in the workstation. I'm logged on as John. Let me go and get to the data to share. Here's group one, group two. If I'm John, I should be able to get in here. I should be able to make some changes to this. So I should be able to create a new folder. And I can do that. Absolutely no problem. Go back up to data two. Go back into group one and I don't have any access to that and that's great because I took that permission away so all of our permissions are now working exactly the way we want now there's one final thing I want to look at in this video and that is this is ugly so we're going to show something that we can do to fix that let me go back over onto the member server okay let me get out of here and I'm going to pull up my server manager. In a previous video, we looked at something called access-based enumeration, and we're going to look at that now. I'm going to look at the properties of the data to share, and we're gonna look at the settings, and I'm going to select enable access-based enumeration, and this is something that's pretty cool. What will happen if I enable this is when a user accesses a folder, it's going to look inside of that folder at all the other objects and any objects to which you do not have access are not going to show up. So I'll say okay for that. And I'm gonna to need to go back over and log out and log back in as John on the workstation. So we'll go and do that. Okay, so log back in as John. I'm gonna to navigate to data two again. And check this out. So now John can see group one, which is the folder that he has permission to, but group two, even though of course it exists, can't see anymore because he doesn't have any permissions to it. 
And this is something that I can tell you from experience is going to save you a lot of grief on your help desk because you won't have all those calls coming in with people looking and going, hey, what's going on here? I've, I'm trying to get, see what's in this folder and it's coming up and giving me access to denied when that's exactly what it should be doing. But, you know, people have that tendency a lot of times to argue and if they see something, well, I should probably have access to that. That is a wrap for the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. I will see you next time.